All right, what's going on, you fam? For you in here, today is going to be another discussion video. You guys have been enjoying these quite a bit, and the responses have been fantastic, which means a lot to me and my editor. We like doing videos that aren't necessarily just PvP videos. It is always a good time to be talking about the game, characters, mechanics, and presenting it to you guys in a manner that is not only easily digestible, but easily understandable. I think that's a, that's a key part anytime you want to do a discussion piece, make sure that it's engaging, really good B-roll, and of course, none of those could be possible without my awesome editor, Juki, so thank you again for editing this video. Today, I wanted to talk about a near and dear unit for me, the Boo Duo, and what it is about them that causes them to unfortunately fall off of the meta so quickly. Uh, the developers were, were honestly right there to making them a fantastic character, but I'm not sure why they kind of just missed. It felt like an open field, an open net, but they just missed. It, they could have been right there for making a truly memorable and fantastic character, and I wanted to go over what it is that they missed with them. You have to understand, Super Saiyan 3 characters in this game are almost cursed in a way. Um, I don't know what it is, but for some reason, it's like they shine brightly and then they just burn out really quick. Once they get out of the featured boost, they just aren't seen anymore. Dragon Fist is such a big example of that. The only time Super Saiyan 3 characters have actually performed really well in this game is when they got a Zenkai Awakening, and honestly, that feels like more of a coincidence, less so the character finally getting some respect because Purple Super Saiyan 3 Goku and the Green LF Super Saiyan 3 Goku both got their Zenkai Awakenings in the golden era of Zenkais, back when they would always come out as the best unit in the game and they were just given a super juiced up kit. That's obviously no longer the case and unfortunately the Boo Duo fell into the curse of just they didn't age well or they didn't perform well. Which is really disappointing given the character is designed quite well. The animations are great. The LF I think is fantastic. The mechanics themselves, the new one that they introduced, the transcended mode is super awesome. Everything about the character is great except for the kit, just their performance. So let's go ahead and talk about what did they do wrong, what could they do, and how a platinum equipment could save this unit. So number one, and this is a big one when it comes to the Boo Duo, they have very poor combo potential. Now I'm not speaking about the Goku side. The Goku side of the Boo Duo is honestly built quite well. Granted, I would prefer if he had minus 10 to arts cost in general, given that strike cards would be a big issue for comboing, but minus 10 to blast cards I guess is okay. He's able to stack up card just speed, very similar to Ultra Super Vegito, and I guess we all know how well that went. I mean, when Ultra Super Vegito was in his peak, he comboed for quite a while and Goku is able to pretty much do something similar. The issue starts when you want to tag into Vegeta and when you are now playing as Vegeta. The issue becomes right there and then. You now feel like you have hit a deadlock. We're gonna use two examples here. The Tag Force, the Super Saiyan 4, Goku, and Vegeta, as well as Gamma 1 and 2 that came out around a month later than the Boo Duo and what it is that they these two do right and the Boo Duo do wrong. So with the Tag Fours, when you are Goku going into Vegeta, you will draw one random card. And the Vegeta side also has card draw speed. So you guys already know how good their combo potential is. They're able to extend their combos long enough such that they're able to go back into Goku and finish off the attack with a nice blue card. I still feel they are the best designed tag switch character in the game, they have really good combat flow. Gamma 1 and 2 pretty much do something similar. Both sides have card draw speed, but when you go from Gamma 1 to Gamma 2, you get not only a short burst of cover nullification, but you also get a new card with card draw speed. So you're able to extend your combos, which is quite nice. The Boo Duo unfortunately don't have either of those things. The Vegeta side doesn't get in any cover null, it doesn't get any card draw speed, and going from Goku to Vegeta doesn't grant you a card. So you just hit a dead stop right there if you're not fortunate enough to get a card. So that is problem number one. Combo potential just stops when you go to the Vegeta side. Issue number two. For some reason, the Boo Duo are the only 
LF tag switch character that does not nullify insurance with their blue card. It is very bizarre to me that they maintain this trend of insurance nullification off the blue for every single LF tag switch character and then stopped when they hit the blue duo. It doesn't make any sense. The tag fours that we used in an example recently do that. Gamma one and two even do it. Granted, they need to lose an ally. The tag switch androids do it, but granted they have anti-insurance as part of their kit, so I guess there's a superior. Even Goku and Vegeta from Legends Festival a couple years back nullify insurance in their blue card. So there really is no excuse as to why the Boo Duo don't do it either. It had to have been a deliberate choice. Doesn't make any sense. Their only method of nullifying insurance is transcended mode. That obviously is a problem in itself. Now the next problem is in the number of tag switches the Boo Duo need in order to get their full power. Every time you swap from the Vegeta back into the Goku side, you get minus 10% of the enemy sustained damage cut effects. This means that you need to swap out six times in order to get your full passive. I don't even know if any tag switch character will end up tag switching six times in order to get their peak power. The Gammas only need to do it four times. The Tag 4s, I don't even think Tag Switch six times in a single match. So it doesn't make sense to me that you would have the Boo Duo Tag Switch six times from minus 30% enemy sustained damage cut effects. To put it into perspective, Kid Boo, the Ultra who released in the same celebration, gets minus 20% just for existing. Hit, the Ultra that came out a couple months prior, gets it after landing 10 cards. Ultra Rosé, their biggest arch nemesis, is able to get sustained damage cut effects super, super easily as well. So it makes no sense as to why they would need 6 swaps in order to get minus 30%. Even if you think about how the character should work, because ultimately the goal for this character is to go into last stand mode, it wouldn't make any sense as to why they don't get their full power when they're at that. You'll notice that they get a 30% damage inflicted buff when they go into transcended mode. Doesn't make any sense for them not to also get the minus 30% enemy sustained damage cut effects. It almost feels like an oversight that doesn't really align with the character, but it's issues like these that end up building up to making the character kind of a fumble. So needing six swaps for your full power doesn't really make any sense. And then the last issue is kind of the Vegeta side in totality. The entire Vegeta side of the character just doesn't really align with what this unit is trying to do. It's pretty obvious they want it to be that the Goku side is your offensive unit. He's the one that stacks up Cardro speed. He's the one that's able to dish out combos with cover nullification. That's what they want with that guy. But the Vegeta side is clearly meant to be your defensive tank. They gave him 5% more damage reduction, and they gave him the means of reducing the enemy strike and blast power. The problem is the Vegeta side doesn't have enough disrupt to not get absolutely shredded by modern characters. Even characters that were released around his time still melted the Vegeta side. So I think the issue is the Vegeta side needed more disruption in order to at least maintain that defensive stance so at least be the defensive ace if their whole objective was okay we don't want vegeta to have any offensive powers we just want him to tank his way into earning his remaining tank switch then they should have provided a little bit more disrupt or a little bit more sustainability for the vegeta side he's able to reduce power via his green card and his strike and blast but the problem becomes he's not able to sustain himself. Most enemies just shred him away. So all those things put together are the reason why the Boo Duo just didn't age well. They had poor combo potential. They had no abilities to nullify endurance unless it was a transcended mode. And then the Vegeta side just really didn't play his role well for the character. Uh, the Goku side was carrying the unit hard and that's way too much weight for him to carry. So now that we covered the problems with the character, Let's talk about things they could do to actually fix the character. The first one, and the most obvious one, is find ways to extend their combo potential. And the most obvious one would be, when you go from the Goku side to Vegeta, you have to draw a card. Some way of extending your combo, they could make it so that it is a random card, but I personally am in the favor of it being a guaranteed blast card. 
Now this will segue into the next bit where the Vegeta side could either have Cardro Speed or he could have what I would prefer, the card into card effect that the Trunks and Vegeta, uh, Vegeta unit have from the fourth year anniversary part two. As you may know, Trunks, when he uses one blast card, goes into another blast card, goes into another blast card. And I would prefer this for the Vegeta side, mainly because in this meta, we have a ton of characters that either destroy your entire hand or take away all of your card draw speed. Units that are able to generate cards after landing a card can at least overlook these two things. So if Vegeta can do that, then tag switching into a guaranteed blast means that Vegeta can then use one blast into another blast into another. Now it's up to them if they want to make it two blasts or three, but just that way would be a great way to extend his combo potential. Now next, the other obvious thing, the blue card should nullify endurance. It, honestly, it, it doesn't make any sense. You're an LF of 2023 tank switch character. Doesn't make any sense why your blue card doesn't nullify insurance. It, it should. Now the next thing, and this is going to be the trickiest one, because it's pretty clear the developers are trying to do this double role assignment for this character. They want Goku to be the one to kick the crap out of your opponent, and they want the Vegeta side to be the one to sponge all the damage. The problem is defense doesn't exist in Legends. It doesn't. The pseudo defense that exists in this game is you just stop their combos. How do you stop their combos? You either kill all their cards, you make their costs go up quite a bit, or you're taking away all their key. That is the only way defense actually exists in this game. And as you may have guessed, Vegeta does none of those things. So, if the developers want to maintain these two, which I would say forget it, just have Vegeta, just let Vegeta combo, forget it. Who cares? Give him the blast in the blast effect or card draw speed or whatever, do that. But if they want to maintain this whole Vegeta's the sponge, they have to give him disrupt. What they could do is they could do two things. One, you can take away a set amount of key uh, after you take a card, kind of like the new LF Namek Goku does. He takes away 20 key up to five times. And then if you lose an ally, you can do that again. Vegeta could do that through the tag switch, or they could make it so that the opponent's card costs go up quite a bit. Either one of these things would be appropriate if they want him to be a sponge, because I don't know if anyone has seen it, but a lot of characters can combo forever and they show up on the field and get 50 key. They land a card, they get 40 key. They use their main ability, they get 100,000 key. Combo potential is endless. And even though Vegeta has 190k defenses and 70% damage reduction, a whole bunch of modern uh, characters have minus 20%, 30% to enemy sustained damage cut effects and can just shred them anyways. Vegeta with no disrupt and high stats is not enough. So if he's gonna be a defensive guy, gotta have key disrupt or card costs go up at a minimum at a minimum he's going to need those things and then this is where it gets even trickier transcended mode vegeta is basically locked in a 1v1 situation or rather 1v3 your opponent can swap out to whoever he wants and vegeta is unfortunately kept by himself so that means that this key disrupt stuff is not going to be enough. I've had hits just use time skip and kill a Vegeta. Even low star hits be able to do it. Obviously, UVB exists now. He's able to do it. So they need to bolster up his green card in this situation or at least make hit so that he's able to survive better. Depending on the route the developers go with when it comes to this unit, uh, what this green card could do will change. So if they want to make it so that Vegeta gets the card into card effect and is able to fight more, then I would want this green card to be a unit, uh, a green card where it'll counter like it does, and then it can be chained with anything. So he, it's not just your blue card, you could chain it with a strike, but they blast and it gives him cover nullification. I don't think this is asking for too much because almost every single modern character from their green card is getting the ability to chain into it with any card and some bolstering to their card draw speed. So for example, the LF Namigoku does this, UI Goku, the Zenkai one does this, even the recently Zenkai Kaioken Goku can do this. The guy is able to just chain in anything into his green card, he gets cover nullification. I think the Vegeta would need that. But if the developers want to just keep Vegeta as a defensive guy, he's just going to be the sponge and Goku is going to be the one to kick the crap out of everybody, then they need to make his survivability greater. They could still do the minus 20 key thing that I talked about prior, 
but they could also add it uh, add the ability to restore vanish from that green card if it lands so that he's able to stay on the field longer safer from danger and they should have it so that he heals similar to how raccoon works where he heals i think four or five percent of his hp for every card that's used or even hit ultra hit he just heals three percent of his health as the opponent hits him he should get something like that these characters have already existed these survivability mechanics minus raccoons of course but you know hit had it so the fact that developers knew this existed or had it existing already and didn't give it to vegeta in that situation just is more insult to injury it's obvious that this character could have been fantastic they had all the tools already there they've already existed they just never gave it to them for some reason so all those things put together would truly make this character shine once again and to recap the issues poor combo potential no endurance nullification off the blue card vegeta does not tank well even though that's his role so that's where the problems are and the potential solution could be that the, the Goku side going into Vegeta draws a card and the Vegeta could either further be a tanky guy or further be a fighting guy. They either make it so that he has better combo potential, so blast into blast or card draw speed, or they make it so that Vegeta can tank better, so he reduces key from disrupt or makes cost go up higher. And then in the transcended mode, they make it so that Vegeta has an easier time surviving. He's in a 1v3 situation. So let him restore vanish on his green and make it so that he heals when the opponent uses cards similar to hit so he can survive better or make it so that the green card counters and you can chain into it so that he can keep fighting back better. And of course, the blue card have insurance nullification. So that's what I think this character needs. Obviously, it sounds like a lot, but a Platinum Equipment can absolutely have these changes. Uh, believe it or not, but a lot of Platinum Equipments for those 1% Sparking Zenkais basically have multiple passives in there already. Yellow Goku Black gets minus 23 to Blast Cost. He gets Card Draw Speed. He gets 60 or 70% damage inflicted. Those are three passives there and then. There's nothing stopping them from giving it to Boo Duo. Honestly, probably the biggest fumbled LF of 2023 fell out of the top 20 most used unit spot in two seasons. Without a doubt, this character deserves a platinum equipment, and I am pleading with the developers to give one soon so that the character can not only have his chance to fight again, but your hard work can actually be used and seen. Because I think we can all agree, the character is sick. The animations are good, LF is awesome, arguably the best final windscreen in the game. So this character deserves their opportunity to be fighting in the meta, and I think it'd be great overall. More pressure on UVB, another blue unit to deal with, uh, Goku and Frieza, just more flexibility in the meta. So you guys let me know in the comment section below what you think. Do my changes make sense? I hope this is presented in a way that makes sense. Obviously my brain can go 40 different ways when it comes to talking about the boo duo but vegeta either becomes a better fighter or he becomes a better tank that is the gist of it he's really the weakest part here and obviously the stitching from goku to vegeta so let's see what the developers do i am pleading with them to please release the platinum equipment for my boys i got them maxed out i think they deserve it you guys let me know in the comment section below what you think but until next time peace